get fucking rocking here. Kind of been trying to get my mojo back here, man. I've been going through kind of some employment issues. So everything seems to be back on track now. Kind of frees the mind when you're not worried about money all the time. So we're gonna, you know, the last tune I did was Million Dollar Bash. So I've been digging into that basement tapes. And uh, so we're gonna do another one from that. Because there's, I, I do quite a few. There's a, there's a good amount of tunes on that that are just stone cold classics, you know. Mentioned the Mighty Quinn, you know, and uh, you got Crash on the Levee, another classic. Tears of Rage, I don't believe I did mention that one. But uh, I'm going to do You Ain't Going Nowhere, which the birds, the birds did this one. Many people did. That's the main one I kind of listened to with Dylan's and uh, Birds did a lot of Dylan tunes quite well, you know. So this is a classic. They're all classic. If I'm doing it, that makes it a classic. Not necessarily the way or my version of it, but it's, it's usually a classic. So, um... Rain so swift. <laughs> that was wrong. So, clouds so swift. That's a good tune, you know. Trying to trying to get that bounce in there, you know. They got a nice this, which I'm not sure I got, but that's uh, kind of got to get that radiator. The radiators do a great cover of that nice upbeat. They kind of do that stop there where I did the substitutes, you know. And it's full band, of course, but um, so that's another good version. They're just a great band. They go to archive.org and. Um, that's Billy White Shoes. And um, you can get free shows, soundboards, and the, just all the covers they do are great. And they kind of do them in their own way, which is what you really got to do. Kind of like the Stones with You Ain't Too Proud to Bag and Just Like My Imagination and Love in Vain. You know, those weren't like copies. So um, just good stuff. And I tell you, the basement tapes, I dug into the... The big version, you know, it's, it's a lot of like Sun Records, you know, songs that Dylan grew up with, you know, and kind of got him into rock and roll. Songs like A Fool Such As I, My Bucket's Got a Hole In It, stuff like that. And uh, One For The Roads on there. But um, Tears of Rage, another tune, uh, original that came out of those sessions. And I was just listening to uh, 
There's a box set, Jimi Hendrix, West Coast Seattle Boy. You know, they're just scraping the barrel. But great shit on there. And there's a version of Hendrix doing that Tears of Rage. Hendrix loved Dylan. You know? He ended up, of course, famously doing All Along the Watchtower. But allegedly he wanted to do I Dreamed I Say, Saw St. Augustine off of uh, John Wesley Harding. And John Wesley Harding was the album that followed the period of the basement tapes. You know, in the official release pantheon, it came after Highway 61. But, um, and that's just a great album. And none of the songs on John Wesley Harding were recorded or worked on at Big Pink, with the band anyways. And uh, so just, and that's just a wonderful album. It's like 35 minutes long or so. Just in every tune, right? The, just the vibe is all very, uh, it's like a good theme, acoustic, simple vibe. You know, and that, and you got to remember at that time, like around 68, I believe it came out. That's when all the, the people were playing the 20 minute jams, like Cream and that, and all those groups, and you know, very electrified. And Dylan, of course, came out with this very simple acoustic album. I think he had like Charlie McCoy and uh, Charlie Daniels may have played on some of the songs. In that Charlie Daniels, the Charlie Daniels from The Devil Went Down to Georgia. He played on Blonde on Blonde as well, I believe. He's a friend of Bob's. And um, and that's where, but Hendrix felt that that was a little too personal, so he did Watchtower, which I think was in the long run. And there's also a version of Hendrix doing Dream Day St. Augustine that's been uh, released in the posthumous, post posthumous era. So just, that's, but hearing him do Tears of Rage... As I mentioned, that's that's where this whole started. Uh, you know, just kind of a demo. There's somebody with them. I, I didn't go and look, like, doing it, but it, it's just awesome. Just, uh, Hendrix just loved him, you know, and the singing, and the words, obviously, and just the songwriting, you know. Obviously, there wasn't the instrumental. Jimmy was on another level, but um, it, it's all about songs with me. You know, like, Hendrix is an unbelievable guitarist, but if his songs weren't cool... I mean, you know, like people like Steve Vai and John McLaughlin and guys like that, these awesome guitarists who are outstanding, but I just can't listen to like a whole album of just some dude wailing on a guitar, you know, you gotta, it's all about songs and it doesn't matter what sort of system they're being played on. Good songs are just good songs. And, uh, but also Jerry Garcia covered Tears of Rage with his band. And uh, his solo band, and there's some awesome versions of that. I mean, he just... Jerry Garcia band, as time goes on, is just gets... Is really kind of more what you end up wanting to listen to. Because it's just Jerry. They, you know, a straight-ahead band, and he solos and everything. And they're all songs he loves doing, and they're all like these 10-minute songs, 15-minute songs with multiple solos, and... Just awesome stuff. And uh, Tears of Rage was just a great one that he did. I would check that out by all means. Definitely, definitely. And it's just cool songs is what it's all about. And feel, you know. And, and just, I'm really into like, you, you, just that, that ragged but right, you know. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just got to be just that undes indescribable realness. And just authenticity and uh fun you know like like you're enjoying it and uh so that's what i'm trying to get across because i ain't ever going to be all that great on guitar but if i can put across a performance that kind of shares my enjoyment and enthusiasm for the music and the songs and makes you maybe go check out the really good versions that's uh that's what i'm going for you know it's just important. It's important to me. That's why I do this. I enjoy the shit out of this, you know? i just trying to share music, you know? And it's funny, because I, I just can't get, like, people in my family. <laughs> just, just doesn't happen, you know? They, they just do not have any taste in music, you know? They're just... I mean, one of my brothers is kind of... I kind of got a lot of, you know, he had the Stones albums in The Clash and stuff, but... uh they're, they're all just kind of, you know, 
what comes. And no need to really dwell on that. <laughs> but I've just tried so hard to get them into interesting music like Taj Mahal and David Lindley, who just died. R.I.P. on David Lindley. One of my favorite, truly one of my favorite musicians. And there's a great guitarist. By all means, go right now. Stop what you're doing. It's not as important whether you're having a kid or doing a fucking paper for school. Go get some David Lindley and El Rey OX. That album especially, El Rey OX, the first one with Took Off My Romeos. Um, Ain't No Way. I mean, everything. The song El Rey OX. Every song on there. Your Old Lady. Just a great... And I first got into him... Uh, there was an album I used to read, Relics Magazine, you know, when you they used to print out the dead set lists. It was a kind of a Grateful Dead-based uh, uh, magazine when it first kind of started, or for many years. And uh, they used to have good reviews in the back. And just the way somebody described this David uh, Lindley live in Japan with Hani Nasser, just the two of them, made me get it. And that that is truly my favorite that's kind of deep though that's it's awesome sounds great that's got the song he does a lot of those tunes mercury blues from uh el rey ox but uh the song more than ava braun is just one of the most wonderful he plays some sort of lap steel guitar and uh it's just a funny song about ava braun and and you know nazis digging the blues and stuff it's just funny and uh it's just funny because I'm never going to censor myself for anything, but you kind of worry like, oh my God, just even saying what I just said, which was nothing, is uh, like a problem in today's society and it's just so pathetic. Fucking woke people suck and I'll go down, I'll go to, I'll go to, I'll fight about that. But uh, David Lindley, by all means, go, go enrich your life. Go online on YouTube. There's some live concerts from his band in the 80s. There's an appearance on um, some late night show, but he does a, a version of Werewolves of London. He was a friend of Warren Zevon, played on his Zevon's first album. He he was big in the uh, he had this band Kaleidoscope in the uh, '60s. He won like the Berkeley, California banjo player best banjo player like five years in a row. But then he became he was in. Uh, Jackson Brown's band was his main main gig. You know, he plays like I'm running on empty, that end, all that. It's all David Lindley. Just he's just incredible. In the song Stay, oh won't you stay? That's David Lindley singing that part. And uh that was just another he's just awesome, you know? Just unbelievable. He was he did a lot with David Crosby and Graham Nash, Warren Zevon, and uh, those were kind of the the main that California sort of sound. He showed up. He played a couple tunes on Dylan's Under the Red Sky, but that was more from Don Waugh bringing him in, I believe, than being buddies with Dylan. Although I'm sure he knew Dylan, and I got I saw him quite a few times, like in Chicago, um, a ton back up in Cambridge, Mass, and stuff. And uh, I saw him all over. I saw him a lot it's out in Seattle. And uh, talk. you get to talk, to, you know, it'd be like, it's like the 30 people gigs, you know, and like these nice small little supper clubs. And he talks with you after. Little guy, he'd wear polyester, had big greasy hair with big uh, sideburns. Just a really interesting dude. Great fun guy, you know, just a really... It's a shame, because I heard he had been sick a few years ago, and that had been passed. And then uh, there was a good write-up in the, in the you know, the Apple News that I read. Like a legitimate, the guy who wrote that knows what he's talking about. He mentioned, like, the Hani Nasser and stuff, who was a, uh, a chief in the Middle East. He's from, like, somewhere in Saudi Arabia or Iran area. But he had his little chiefdom or something. But he played just like a drum, and it was David Lindley playing all these various, like, Weisenborn guitars and stuff, and slides and stuff. Just a true, he was, like, literally probably some of my favorite music right still is uh, David Lindley. Just couldn't recommend him enough. Top, he's, he's, he's up there. He's, like, right up 
he's up there with the Stones and Beatles and all that for me. But go to YouTube, I would say. There's some live gigs on there, and that you can get a good look at him. And his band is just outstanding. And it's a lot of upbeat music, you know, and kind of with good good amount of humor. So, uh, so yeah, maybe I'll do a, do a song. Maybe even tomorrow we'll do a back-to-backer. I, I play a couple of his tunes he did on um, on the uke. So, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll try and see if I can pull that off. All right, folks. Well, um, yeah, pass the word. I'm trying to get to 50 subscribers, which I, I can't believe I'm being a whore about this. But so that you need 50 subscribers to do live streams. So I'd like to do that so I can just kind of play songs and talk about shit like this and um, not have to make like a 15 minute video or worry about that shit. Just because, you know, things I have to say are so important and vital to the world that I should be able to just be in front of a camera all the time because it's important stuff. That's right. The wall of truth. He is. He's the worst. Lindsey Graham is the worst douchebag we have in our government. Total coward. Fucking just this war. Just tell the worst politician. And he close for close friend of uh, Joe Biden's, which tells you a lot there. I can't can't get out of here without talking a little politics. You know, look, the the whole idea that you have to be on a team, Democrat, Republican, blah blah. Grow the fuck up. You know? Why aren't you thinking about the stupidity of this shit and thinking you have to be on some team or stand by everything they believe in? It's all fucking bullshit. These politicians do not care about us. All they care about is taking care of themselves, enriching themselves, and making sure they don't have to worry about another thing the rest of their life. You know? The fact that we're sending hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine... Nobody ran on that who's been elected in these offices. They haven't allowed us to vote on that in any way. And, and we got more than enough problems. And believe me, the people, the everyday people in Ukraine are getting fucked. And, and it's not good and it's not fair and it's not right. But to say it was unprovoked is bullshit. The United States caused this war, started it, and is keeping it going. Not Russia. And fuck you with your, you a Putin apologist. Fucking Putin's exactly what he looks like. But the United States caused this war and started it. And the blowing up that Nord Stream pipeline, that's fucking terrorism. And that's what our president did. And he's lied about it. And that fucking sweaty lip douchebag, Jake Sullivan, who was also involved in the fake Russia dossier hoax as he worked with Clinton. What a slime ball. And that Victoria Newland, another fat cow fucking political fucking hack in Ned Price and Jake Sullivan those three fucking cocksuckers and Susan Rice too she's another fucking she's Obama's fucking right hand people these are just horrible people people all of them Mitch McConnell Nancy Pelosi Biden they're all fucking scumbags and you, you know you, you may not like Trump but the, the bottom line and you really have to admit this even if you hate him that's it there's not too many secrets to the fucking Donald Trump thing. These motherfuckers got more shit in their closets than fucking... Zsa Zsa Gabor? I don't know. That's all I could come up with. But anyway, peace out. We'll do something for David Lindley tomorrow. Get some people. I need I need 37 more fucking uh, subscribers to get to 50. So whatever you can do there. Thanks.